Sometimes, I just sit in my recliner and look at my motorcycle. Hey guys, welcome back to the Motobuff YouTube channel, where today we're going to take a walk around my beautiful Aprilia 1100 factory. And uh, I'm very excited. I've got some parts that just showed up for the motorcycle, and we're going to be talking about that just a little bit. Um, coming up in an upcoming video, we're going to have the install. We're going to have... Um, some dyno videos coming up soon, so uh, lots of things happening, and we're super excited, so stay tuned. All right, guys, this is my 2019 Aprilia 210 V4 1100 factory. She's an absolute beast. Uh, right now, I've got her pretty much stock, but I wanted to do a quick walk around just to see, uh, to show you guys what we're working with on my new channel. So I bought this bike uh, about a year and a half ago. I uh, got a good deal on it over in Ohio, and um, I've done a couple of track days on it already. I've already put a couple of thousand miles on it. But um, let me show you what we're working with here. So we'll just start out here at the front. This is the original front tire. Uh, I've got a new set of tires coming. This one's just about worn all the way out. Um, we'll talk about this uh, zip tie um in an upcoming video about how to set your motorcycle suspension for your weight and your ability uh, right now <clears throat> i have ebc centered metallic pads uh, i got those because when i first bought this motorcycle brembo had a recall on the brake pads so they um, were unavailable everybody was buying them up all the dealerships didn't have any inventory so they called me and they said, hey, you can't take delivery of your motorcycle because there is a uh, recall out on the motorcycle and we can't allow you to take delivery with an open recall. So uh, it's going to be a few months for brake pads and then you can come get it. We're very sorry. Uh, so I decided to just go ahead and get some uh, EVC pads. They went ahead and called it good and they got me all squared away. Um, to take delivery of the motorcycle. So I've had those pads from the start. They say that the stock pads are just uh, perfectly adequate, uh, even for heavy track use. Brembo does a really great job um, with their brake systems. Um, sticking with brakes here, uh, I did upgrade the fluid. I was on the stock fluid. Um, two weeks after I bought the motorcycle, I did my first track weekend and by the end of the uh, second or third session, I could pull this all the way back to the grip. So the fluid was either boiling off or it was just inadequate to take the kind of abuse needed um, to ride this thing on the track. Could have been also that I was pretty heavy on the brakes, maybe a little bit too heavy on the brakes. Um, I'm, I was still a beginner at the time, so I went ahead and elected to change the uh, brake fluid out. I got some Motul RBF660 brake fluid. Um, and I haven't had another issue with it. I can ride it all day on the track. I can get as hard on the brakes as I want and it will not uh, have any brake fade whatsoever. All right, so coming around here, um, completely stock engine, stock exhaust. Um, I did add a PSR oil filler cap and that was just for uh, cosmetic reasons. Um, and it also has this little safety wire pin uh, so in case this cap were to ever come loose, there's no way that it's going to unthread and come off the motorcycle and start pumping oil out all over my right leg. Um, so uh, that was one of the reasons I did that. Um, you can see this bike has the Olin's TTX rear shock. It's got electronic damping, the uh, Olin Smart EC2. Um, so while I'm riding down the road, uh, the computer for the bike will sense the road conditions and adjust the compression and rebound damping accordingly. Um, and we'll go over the cluster and see uh, what all the settings look like inside the menus and things like that. Um, this bike does have manual preload adjustment. Um, what I love about it is it's the hydraulic preload, so you don't have to loosen up any collars or any nuts or anything like that. Um, there's a special tool that sits underneath the seat and um, you just put the tool on this little uh, hex right here 
and you can spin it either way to adjust the preload um, as needed. Uh, like I said, this is the stock exhaust. However, I did go ahead and safety wire the valve open and I removed all of the uh, exhaust valve cables. Um, I don't like the exhaust valves on these bikes. They make it sound really bad. Not bad, but uh, there's not a lot of noise. They kind of, they sound uh, very restricted. So uh, I went ahead and took the valve, the cables off, opened the valve, and then I safety wired it open. Um, <clears throat> while that valve is closed, the exhaust only comes out of here. And it's a much smaller hole. It's very restrictive. Um, with the valve open, all of the, the uh, exhaust gas comes out of this hole here, which is much bigger and it's pretty much a straight flow, straight flow all the way down through the, to the uh, catalytic converter. I do have an exhaust coming for this. It will be here uh, next Wednesday. Um, today is Sunday. So just a few more days. I will be, I will be revealing that on the channel uh, here soon. And we're going to go over the installation, unboxing, and all that good stuff. I'm going to take some good, high-quality audio sound clips um, so you can see a before and an after. Um, and we're also going to take it to a dyno to see uh, before and after. Okay, so on the back we have a rear fender eliminator from EvoTech. Um, I'm running the stock turn signals. Of course, I've got the license plate removed for this video just for security reasons. Uh, I did have to make my own wiring harness here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, but if, uh, if you'd like to see how I did the wiring harness and everything, um, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can take this apart and kind of show you the gist of what I did. Uh, I wish I would have been able to film this, but um, it just didn't work out. Uh, I've got the stock tire, um, which is completely gone. It's down to the wear bars pretty much everywhere. Uh, I may have said it before, but there's a new set of tires coming. I'm going with the uh, so another set of super courses, the TDs. It should be in here uh, within the next few days. And I'm going to make a video on installing these and balancing them myself. Uh, not a lot of people do that. A lot of people... Uh, take their bikes to the dealer and they spend a whole bunch of money to get the uh, the tires changed. So I'm going to walk, uh, walk you guys through this just to uh, let you know that it's not the hardest thing in the world to change tires. You can do it by yourself and it, uh, you can save yourself a lot of money by doing it that way. Um, I do have a battery uh, tender. I always keep it plugged in. Um, I've got the uh, tank pads, stomp grips. I got the clear ones because this bike has Aprilia written on the side and it's got graphics so I didn't want to uh, cover those up. So I do have the stomp grips and those really help uh, especially on the track when you need to squeeze the tank um, and get yourself a good lock onto the bike when you're hanging off in the corners. Uh, let's go through some menu stuff just to show you guys what we're working with here. So in our menu here, on our cluster, we have a bunch of settings right here. These are all the settings that the bike currently uh, is set to right now. Uh, we have a tr Aprilia traction control. It's set on level four. There's eight different modes to it, and I can turn those up or turn those down as necessary with uh, the side paddles here. Um, those are here. I get a lot of questions about this a lot. Um, are these paddle shifters? What do these do? Why are there things here? Uh, and this is just for the uh, traction control only. Um, so I can turn this up or down as necessary. Uh, sport is for the fueling. Um, with sport, you have three different options. You got sport, track, or race. Sport is going to have a very aggressive uh, on-off throttle. Um, Track, and it's going to have maximum uh, engine braking. Track is about the same, um, except there's a little bit less engine braking. And in race mode, from, um, from what I can see, the on-off throttle transitions are a little bit smoother, and there's very little engine braking. So if you're trying to trail brake into a corner, 
you don't want the engine holding you back as much, you go into, uh, you can put it in race mode. Uh, down here, I've got the uh, analog brake system. And there's three different modes for the analog brakes. Uh, you can do uh, level one, two, or three, or you can turn it off. Three is the most intrusive, and the second that the wheel starts to lock up even the slightest amount, you'll get intervention and it will uh, activate the ABS and keep the tire from uh, locking up. Uh, on a racetrack, it can be kind of dangerous because you can't get all of the brake pressure and the system is holding you back uh, a little bit too hard. But uh, in level two or level one, um, it kicks back the intervention and it allows you to actually slide the tire just a little bit here and there, um, but it won't, still won't let it lock up. Uh, then we have Aprilia Wheelie Control, AWC. There's three different modes for that, as well as off. Uh, level one will let you uh, wheelie up to about a foot off the ground. As soon as the tire gets about a foot off the ground, it'll intervene and it'll pull some timing out of the engine. It'll set the, uh, the front tire back on the ground. Uh, level two, it'll let you get about four or five inches up and then it'll set it back down. And then level three will not let the tire leave the pavement. As soon as it leaves the pavement, it sets it right back down. I also have a Prilia suspension control. That's for the, um, for the damping, automatic uh, dynamic damping. We're gonna go into that menu real quick and um, take a look at what, uh, we've, what settings we have for that. So in Aprilia suspension control, we have six different modes. There's active track, which gives you the most um, options here. You got front firmness, rear firmness, your brake support, um, acceleration support, mid corner support, and you can turn the steering damper up or down. Um, brake support is when you're under braking, it will actually uh, increase the compression damping and it won't let the fork compress all the way down so you don't get as much travel out of the front fork under braking. Acceleration uh, support will go ahead and tighten up the uh, the rear shock in order to keep the weight distribution um, from shifting uh, fore and aft. Uh, mid corner it can detect whether it's mid corner and it'll change the damping as necessary and then steering damping um, you can just set how hard or how soft you want it to do. And it's an event-based steering damper, as far as I know. So changing it here, uh, you can still turn the steering wheel, not the steering wheel, you can still turn the handlebars pretty quick and it won't, uh, it won't damp it at all. It has to actually um, sense it out on the road. Or I can reset all the settings. I have these set pretty much to the as stiff as it'll get. Um, I can reset it if I want to. Um, active sport, see you don't have as many uh, options here. Um, and this is set up to the factory, whatever they thought was best for it. And you could reset that as necessary. Road, um, that's pretty much as plush and as soft as you're going to get. Um, you have the same amount of options here, but um, there's not, uh, it, it's, it's more set up for riding down the road if you want more of a plush ride. And then you have three different modes that you can program for manual. Uh, when you're in manual mode, the cool thing about Olin's is that they set up the same amount of clicks, if you will. Uh, let's just show you that. Front compression, default is 13 clicks, and right now it's set at 13 clicks. And if you had a manual Olin's fork on the... Uh, on this motorcycle. Uh, if you set it to 13, it would give you the same, the, the same uh, compression as the, uh, the electronic damped forks. Uh, so if you're coming off of a, a 2017 and you're going to a 19, 20, or 21, um, and you wanted to set the suspension like you had on the old bike, you could set it to the same amount of clicks and you'd get the same exact thing. And there's three different modes for that that are programmable. Uh, that's about it. Um, I do have an option for the Aprilia quick shifter. You can turn the, uh, the auto blip on or off. The uh, quick shifter is always on, no matter what. So if you pull up on the, um, on the shifter, 
it'll automatically shift into the next gear. But you can turn Aprilia quick shift down on or off. So if you want the down blip or if you want to just use your slipper clutch, it's up to you. And that's about all we have here. Um, there is a lap timer and you can go in and see the lap times, your max lean angle, your max speed, your max brake pressure. And uh, you start and stop the lap timer with the high beam selector. Um, you can turn the shift light to whatever RPM you'd like. From the factory, when you first get this motorcycle, it's set at about 8,500 RPM. And once you get it broken in, you can change it to whatever you like. This bike uh, has a rev limiter at 12.5, I believe. I have it set to 11.5, so as soon as the red lights come on, um, you'll see that. You'll see that, and then you, you'll know when to shift without having to actually look down at the cluster. All right, and then in configuration, that's just going to be um, time and date and language and all that kind of stuff. So nothing to see there, really, and that about covers it for the menu. Um, well, I guess we do have a couple of things here that I can show you on the cluster. Uh, when I pull the throttle on this motorcycle, it just switched because the lighting is a little bit low here. Um, when you pull the throttle, it has a throttle brake or a throttle map in the uh, bottom right corner. When I pull on the brakes, I can get full brake pressure and it kind of shows you your brake pressure. Um, and also there's lean angle here. Uh, so when I lean the motorcycle, you'll see it right here. There's a lean angle indicator. Um, right now you can't see that because the bike is on a stand, so I can't move the bike left or right in order to uh, to show you some roll angle here. Um, down here at the bottom, this is the V4 MP stuff. Uh, you can select interphone or intercom rather. You can do music, you can read text messages and connect it to your phone and all that stuff. I actually don't have the V4 MP module uh, installed on the motorcycle. They don't come from the factory that way. They do come on the RSV4, but not on the 210. Uh, I may go ahead and do that upgrade. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I did get a quote from the dealer. They told me it'd be about $400 to have that installed and set up. Um, it's not hard to install it. There's like a little bracket you install and they plug the module in. The reason that I would have the dealership do it is because the, um, the actual instrument cluster, the firmware won't talk to it uh, unless the firmware is updated. So you have to have uh, both at the same firmware level before they will talk to one another and be able to get functionality out of them. But that about covers it for the, uh, for the instrument cluster and all of the electronics. If you want to see more, if you have a specific question, uh, let me know in the comments. Up here to the left of the cluster, uh, I have the USB. Uh, this is a factory um, USB port, and it's an accessory that you order from uh, Piaggio or Aprilia through the dealer or through online. Um, there's a little port that's underneath in the back of the cluster here that you plug into and you have to cut a hole in this little piece of trim right here for this to be installed uh, and you get it hooked up and then you can charge your phone with it. Uh, right now I've got a lightning cable just for my iPhone and I've got all the slack coiled up right here and zip tied to this cable. Um, I don't want all the slack hanging around. I don't want it getting uh, caught up in my controls and obstructing my ability to control the motorcycle. So that's why I've got that there. And then once I plug my phone in, I can just plug it in right here. I can get um, my navigation and control the music or whatever I want to do there. Um, that's about it. I do have some, uh, some serious plans here. Um, in that box right there, I've got some parts from AF1 Racing. I'm not going to show you what they are um, until I get all of the parts in and we're about to do the install. And uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it um, as a surprise. But um, just to give you a clue, it's going to open, uh, open up about 10, maybe 15 more horsepower. Not sure yet. Uh, like I said, we're going to do an exhaust reveal. Um, 
here soon. And uh, for now, that's all I have. And I'm going to do some sound clips and um, we're going to start the motorcycle up. It's cold right now, so I'm going to start the motorcycle and let it warm up. And then um, through the magic of cameras and computers, the next uh, thing you're going to see is the sound clip of the motorcycle with stock exhaust. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. But the next video you're gonna see is my exhaust reveal. Uh, I'm gonna reveal what exhaust I'm putting on this beautiful machine here. And also, um, I'm gonna reveal what other mods that we've got coming in the very near future. Um, should be a lot of fun. And like I said, we're gonna try to get some dyno videos if I can get an appointment with the dyno guy um, here this week. Uh, hopefully I can get that done. Um, but regardless, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to get it into the dyno after I put the parts on. Um, so stick, stay tuned and uh, really excited and hopefully uh, we'll see you in the next one.